here on campus, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about this backdrop for the launch and uh, all about the art and maybe a little bit more about the student leader. just through coffee cups. 
So if you have, if, if you buy a coffee today, come and donate your coffee cup to our stash. We have uh, bins placed in the Riddell Center as well. So we want to create this piece. Um, we're going to start it today. Is going to continuously grow, and I'm, I'm hoping that it'll kind of consume the space in the gallery and just give that visual to say, look at the ways that we've created and that we've collected just within a few short weeks on campus, only through coffee cups. So kind of giving attention to the ways that issues that we need to address in our own community and in our own uh, personal lives. Um, so really have too much else to say with the gallery. I think it speaks for itself, honestly. Um, everyone has kind of come from their own background and their own perspective on sustainability issues and how, what that means to them and how they address that. So take your time and, and read through a few of the artist statements and um, just think about how that can, think about, think about something that you can change in your own life, possibly, and maybe share that with somebody. So that's my challenge for you today. That's my sustainability month challenge for you. So think about one simple thing that you can do in your life to further sustainability and tell somebody here or, or out there. Tell somebody. Because I think um, it's important for us to tell, oops, to tell people uh, those things so that we ourselves are held accountable to it. That's my belief in you. Um, so with that, um, if you have any questions about the workshops and the, all the events that are happening this week. We have three workshops that are happening this afternoon. Um, I've got the poster over there and we have one happening tomorrow at one o'clock if you're interested in contributing to the coffee cup piece and helping us build it. Um, you're welcome to come to that. And then on Thursday at uh, three o'clock we're going to have an upcycling workshop and talk a little bit more about some of the pieces and some things that can be done. So that's my plug for all of the events. Thank you. <laughs> so now we'll welcome up Roberta Engel from the City of Regina. Thanks, Naomi, and thanks to Neil. I think I tend to agree with you. The gallery is beautiful. I couldn't believe how creative people can be with waste. Um, and really, truly, if you put your mind to it, you can do some very good things with this. Anyways, good morning everyone. My name is Rupert Engel. I'm the manager of Waste Diversion Services for the City of Regina. I'm also here with a couple of my team members, Kendall Lysak and Bree Bennett. They're just in the front row. And we're here to talk about what we're doing at the city as well as where we want to plan to take Waste Plan Regina going forward. We feel that in today's world, it's extremely important for us as a community to become more aware of overall impact we're having on our environment as it relates to waste. That is why we at the Waste Diversion Services Branch for, for the City of Regina, it is our mandate to focus on reducing and reusing and diverting waste as generated in our um, community. We also plan to do this in the most social, economical, and environmental manner. This will be achieved through education, public outreach, and a community strategy. Programs and services offered will also be cost-effective, efficient, and will provide a high level of service to all of our residents. In 2011, Council approved Waste Plan Regina. Waste Plan was, uh, Regina was adopted as a formal program that details how the city is working towards reducing and diverting waste for the future. To date, our primary focus has truly been on the residential sector, but future strategies do include our industrial, commercial, institutional sectors, as well as construction and demolition. City's council's goal, City Council's goal is to divert 40% of our waste by 2015 and 65% of our waste by 2020. Although this is a huge target, I think as, if we all come together as a community, it will be easily achieved. On July 1, we introduced our residential recycling program and Blue Cart Recycling has taken off to be a very successful service. Residents have diverted more than 3,000 tons of product from the landfill. We have over 70% set out rate um, for the carts, as well as the fact that our contamination rate is, was expected at 10 to 15%. So residents know exactly what product they need to throw in their Blue Cart, which would be 
paper, cardboard, tin, glass, plastics, one through seven, and so forth. On Saturday, October 5th, we held a household hazardous waste event for our residents. This event provided a friendly and environmentally friendly way for our residents to divert their household hazardous waste. We also partnered up with um, Sarcan and Saskatchewan Scrap Tire Corporation, as well as Community Living, which expanded the amount of products that we'd be able to take and divert from the landfill. This year, we reported 470 cars attending the event and diverting just over 10 tons of material from the landfill. That is huge, that's massive, and I want to congratulate all the residents for partaking. Another very successful pilot project that we've been doing is our Leaf and Yard pilot project. Um, since Saturday, September 28th, and on every Saturday since then, we've been hosting Leaf and Yard depots at four locations around the city. Those locations include the Optimist Arena, Northwest Leisure Center, Sandra Schmirler Center, and our community <coughs> shop at 500 or Cola. From now until November 2nd, we invite all residents to bring in their leaf, twigs, pumpkins, and yard waste and uh, so that we can divert the material to a local farm that's using it for remediation purposes. The Leaf and Yard pilot project and also the Household Hazardous Waste product, we intend to use all of the information and numbers that we're gathering, it, gathering from it to uh, provide a, a more permanent solution going forward. Waste Plan Regina Phase 2 includes the implementing of recycling service for those residential properties not currently receiving the Blue Cart Recycling Service. These properties include multifamily and condominium associations. Waste Plan Regina will also start focusing in on determining what best programs will fit for bulky waste such as furniture as well as white goods which is fridges and stoves. Providing services to our residents to divert waste is only one step in our overall process. We believe we also need to provide education to our residents. This is why we're offering urban sustainability classes this fall. At these re workshops, we will be teaching residents on how to indoor compost for the winter, and we'll also share other valuable waste reduction tips. These workshops are being offered on November 6th and November 18th, and you can go onto our City Regina website to sign up. And uh, yeah, Bree's, Bree's very compassionate, compassionate about her, her uh, composting, so you'll learn lots from her. In closing, I want to say thank you so much to the U of R for doing, taking all of the efforts you do to, to make this a more sustainable community. Uh, Sask Waste Reduction Council for allowing me this opportunity to, um, to speak. Um, I'm brand new to this industry. I come from the water industry, so I'm brand new to it. I'm learning more and more about it every single day, and I can't be more passionate about something because it's very important to all of us. So thank you, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come up and talk to me or Kendra or Bree, and uh, thanks again.